Oh, look at you sitting all the way up. You're out of frame now. <laughs> sloucher! <laughs> You're a sloucher! Yeah. You were slouch town! I'm still a little taller. You're... <laughs> because you were slouching! I can go all the way back up and move my chair up, you sloucher. Sloucher. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever today. My dad is here. I'm He's so excited back. to be back. And we're going to be talking about The Scarecrow of Romney Marsh. Dr. And this Sin. Is, this is one that I recommended from my childhood. It was released when I was a wee lad of six years old. And I love the character from the get-go. Do we need to do a shout-out for the person who found the movie? Max! Max, you're the finder. I've heard all about you from Coot. Well, Way he, to go, he, Max. You made, he made you laugh. You did. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you, you immediately started breaking my stones. Way to go. Dr. Sin, alias the Scarecrow of Romney Marsh, is a 1964 television release. What would you say it's about, Dad? Uh, basically, it is about uh, England uh, during the time of the, before the United States, but the colonies. Mm -hmm. And this particular individual who is lives as a vicar, which is a, a man of faith, in the Romney Marsh area is very much against the king's treatment of the people and the king's taxes and the king's soldiers. And so he has created a anonymous group who wear masks, scarecrows, weird looking birds, all kinds of stuff, and they wreak havoc on the king's tax gatherers and the king's, king's army. Nice, good. It's directed by James Nielsen, cinematography by Paul Beeson, editing by Peter Moida, music by Gerard Sherman, and it's written by Robert Westerby. Based off a book series by Russell Thorndike. This is supposedly, it was originally three episodes, which we now have access to, but we watched the uh, edited into a feature version. And it's supposedly just based off the first book, though I would venture a guess that it is nothing like the first book, <laughs> considering this movie he's much like, he's more of a good guy, where in the book it sounds very much like he was an old captain with a dark past, um, and he ends up dead at the end of the first book, and the books following kind of show him um, how he ends up getting to the first book, which is I thought it was dying. interesting that even when he's being dastardly, like hanging the guy in the chair, you think, oh man, he just strung a guy up. He pronounced him guilty and strung him up. That's not a very Robin Hood thing to do, but it turns out it was a rigged chair and they didn't really kill the guy and the guy was perfectly fine yeah. and so it restored my faith and mm -hmm. made me not feel guilty for wanting to be the Scarecrow when I was six years old. The movie stars Patrick McGowan as Dr. Sin or the Scarecrow of Romney Marsh, Sean Scully as John Banks and George Cole as Mr. Mips. How'd you think it looked? Well, I think it was probably done like the, what is that, the Wonderful World of Disney that it premiered on. So it was basically, I don't ever remember it being a movie. It was always television. And I think it's, they kicked it off uh, as a three-parter on the Wonderful World of Disney. And, and I remember just absolutely loving it. I love the character and there was that. It's a lot more action. I think I commented last night that the edited feature didn't seem to have nearly as much of the action scenes mm. as the individual the individuals uh, episodes did themselves and I'm curious to see that when we watch those three episodes mm -hmm. to see sure. if there's a little more action that got for story continuity reasons got edited out but sure. I, we'll have to see that I just as a as a as a child I remember it being a little more action based there was a lot of storytelling going on there was a lot of character development going on in the movie that I think they put a little more toward the scarecrow and the stuff he was doing mm. as opposed to developing those characters like they did in the movie. Yeah. I'd say it looked pretty good, especially they did a lot of like day for night shots. So you were like, wow, a bright moon. I was like, no, it's the sun. They shot day for night. <laughs> There's no way. But it looked pretty good, especially for 1964. And it, especially for us originally not being able to find it and then finding it and it's in pretty decent quality, actually, I'd say. It didn't look like pixelated garbage on a 55 inch television screen. No, not at all. That's yeah. interesting you bring that up. 
And, and as usual, the Disney color back then was key to Disney because of all the animated features, so I think they paid a good attention to the color that was in it, uh, even with day to night. It was kind of dim all the way mm -hmm. through, so you're not seeing any giant colors jump out at you. Well, the red coats had pretty bright red. <laughs> yes, yes, the general definitely had. <clears throat> Especially because he was a fat British general, so more red. I feel like it's... I feel like I just felt this way about um, Hector the Stowaway Dog. That I also had the edited movie put together and I also had it in its two part episodes. And when I finished watching the movie, I went and I skimmed through the first episode and toward the end, there was a chunk of stuff that was not in the movie. So I think I'm just gonna have to start watching these episodes in two pieces if I can get access to them or in three pieces, however, because I'm missing things that are probably fun and important. So I am sad that they kind of cut out some of the movie because I feel like it probably would have been fine. The movie was only an hour and a half, so if you cut out 10 or 20 minutes, it would have been fine to have that long of a movie, I feel like. So I agree, I'm a little bummed. We'll have to watch the episodes and Yeah, see. in the hands of the editor, right? You never know what's in the hands of the editor, but uh, I never saw it as a movie. It was presented on The Wonderful World of Disney in the three. I actually thought it was like, in my childhood mind, thought it was more of a series like that. Mm -hmm. The three makes sense. It was definitely more than one, and it wasn't where I sat down and watched a movie. It was more like I thought it was a TV show. Mm -hmm. Maybe as a little kid, that's why I liked it so much. Mm -hmm. I thought the music was good. I thought it was appropriate and fit the theme and vibe and then his song at the beginning explaining. Yeah, not overdone. Yeah, I thought that was really helpful, especially for you as somebody, I mean, I kind of remember him somewhat. And, and it was interesting that you brought up, well, the book says he's not such a great guy, but they obviously had edited him to be a, a hero. Mm -hmm. A dark hero, I'll bite, but still a, a hero. And it's really different. I think it's worth watching the other stuff because you get a completely different perspective. Because I never, what we did last night, there was a lot of familiar in it, but then there was like. He did, he was like, where's the action? Yeah, where, where is it? And, uh, but that could be me just being a little kid and the fact that there was a crazy guy riding a horse in a scarecrow outfit was enough for me to think that was plenty of action. But I, I will say this, that I liked it just as much as I did as a kid watching it again after mm. all these years. And believe me, it's been a long time. So I'm sure this is probably because it was edited down into the movie instead of the three episodes, but this was very dialogue heavy. There was not a lot of action, which is weird because I feel like a lot of older Disney movies like this will spend sometimes too long on the action. And I'm like, okay, I'm bored. Can we move on from this action sequence? But I didn't feel like there were that many action sequences at all. And there was a lot of scenes of talking and dialogue. And I felt very much while we were watching that movie last night that that was not, it wasn't for kids. I was like, this is either the whole family can watch it because it's not inappropriate. You made that comment to me that it was more adult than you But expected. it was much more like, I felt like I was watching a, a movie from the 1960s with you that was like put out for just people and not kids specifically, um, which you know is very possible. And then I could see somewhat episodic segments to it. A lot of times when I see movies that have been edited together um, to be one movie, but was really two episodes or three episodes, I can see the delineation. So like in the Moochie movies, you have Moochie's like getting the pop, you know, the, the, the baseball team together or he's making it on the baseball team. And then the whole second episode is him like going to the championship or whatever. This, I felt like the whole Ramsley storyline was one episode, and then I felt the other storyline with the um, saving Harry and the American was another episode. So I'm curious if they stole pieces from the third episode or what the third episode was potentially about. So we'll have to make sure we watch all three. Yes. Because those are the two big stories that I gathered, so I was like, those were the episodes. For sure. I think you're 100% right. Um, Dr. Sin's cool. <laughs> I liked him. I thought he was fabulous. I love me some Robin Hood, so the fact that he's pretty similar to Robin Hood, um, I totally vibe with. Yeah, no, it's it's always the, you know, just a simple change of, of clothing and he turns into a different human being. Nobody knows who he is. I always find that fascinating. 
but uh, it works. It works. I, I think he works better as a hero, whether it be sort of an anti-hero or whatever, but I think he works better as a hero than he would as a zero mm -hmm. anytime. The both of us laughed at, gag him! <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> yes, and he did it more than once. Gag him. He didn't want to hear any crap. Mm -hmm. I also kind of like the whole mask thing, because besides John and Mr. Mips, the rest of them all kind of get to be anonymous with that, which say, like, you know, keeps them all safe, yeah. which I kind of, I vibed with. I hated John's bird mask though. That was horrifying. It was creepy. The eyeballs? <laughs> it was really so creepy. So horrifying. Freaking Sean Scully, dad. I thought I was done with Sean Scully. I didn't think I was gonna get to see him again. And what did you say all through the movie? Sean! Yeah, that's what you said. It's Sean! <laughs> Dad's all excited about McGowan or whatever his name is. Patrick and I'm McGowan. like, Sean! <laughs> Sean was in so many Disney movies, Dad. Almost Angels, The Prince and the Pauper. Those so are my favorites. Yes. Well, Disney's big on that, though. They're big on especially back then using their people. They had contracts back then. Yeah, so you true. had Fess Parker in a bunch. You had Richard Todd in a bunch. You had Dean Jones. Dean Jones. Haley. Moochie. Haley, what's her name? Mills. Mills, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, less women than they did men, for sure. That's true of all the studios. I Misogynist. I was so excited to see Sean. <laughs> Almost Angels is one of my faves. It was my first number one. In my first top ten. That's awesome. Because they're So you saw him again. Yeah. And he was a daring do young man. He had such dark hair. Yeah. His hair is not that dark in anything else he's in. Dad, what's your favorite part? Well, needless to say, whenever the scarecrow is on camera, I love the trial mm. uh, because I think it, it, it just, it brings out a little more in the character than you expect. He comes across as very hard, very menacing, mm -hmm. but in the reality, whenever, after everybody leaves, they pull the mask off, they bring the guy down and nobody's hurt, everybody's alive. And that's the way I remember it as a good character. And I, and to me, that was, I, I love that part of the movie. and. Uh, because there's action in there too, action in the movie, a lot of uh, a lot of drama over the trial of that guy, Ramsey, is that right? Ramsley. Ramsley. And uh, I, I really, I like that. I like the, oh boy, maybe maybe I remembered wrong and he really is not a good guy. Oh, no, he's a good guy. <laughs> so I like that. It reaffirmed my childhood uh, memory, so I guess that's why I like it so much. Uh, my favorite part is when he reunited the like judge guy with his son uh, and was freeing yeah. his son. I loved that because it was like spreading the gospel of the the scarecrow. Look, yeah. I'm reuniting you with your son before he goes off to be free and is alive. Correct. And and where was he gonna go away and be free and alive? America. Yes, <laughs> in the colonies. Yeah. Uh, what was your least favorite part? Uh. I don't know, for some reason I didn't remember that he was a vicar. <laughs> you don't like that he's a vicar? I don't know, it's just I guess the religion's probably the greatest way to hide if you're a scarecrow -y type dude. But I guess it me back then, most certainly the church was involved in issues of state, shall we say. And that probably makes perfect sense that there were a lot of religious people, whether Protestant, obviously being an English production, or Catholic, that, that that's going to be the case. Yeah. But I don't know. I would have I would have been perfectly okay if the whole movie was him and the scarecrow outfit. <laughs> It's just me. <laughs> I like the double cross aspect of it, though, where like he gets to be in the room where it happens because they don't yeah. suspect him. Right. It is a little Superman-ish, though. Like, yeah, that's why I like it. <laughs> Nobody can tell his voice at all. I have, see, come on now. I love me some Clark Kent. My least favorite part was the scene where Ramsley was a turd blossom to his stepmom. Turd blossom, I don't like him. It was sad. She was nice. Um, would you recommend this? Oh, I would definitely recommend it. That it, it's it's tip it's wonderful Disney. It's typical Disney. It, it, it it's not so violent, you know. But there's a hero, there's an anti-hero, and there's a bad there's a guy. Uh, it's just I, I think it's the kinds of things that 
but maybe more in the three episodes. I was going to say, would you watch it again? But uh, you're wanting to watch the three episodes. I would so. think I would be more interested in watching the three episodes just because that's what I remember. I definitely did not see it as a continuous movie. That was what I saw last night was different sure. than normal. But that doesn't mean it was bad. I, I'm a little more grown up now, and I probably kind of appreciated some of the sub character development because you don't. I don't remember them. I was sure. six, so I remember Scarecrow <laughs> and maybe one other guy. Yeah. Whereas it's kind of nice to mm -hmm. see and remember the general and remember the the father and his son, and I didn't remember yeah. that. And I'm sure that that's where a lot of my positive feelings about the Scarecrow came from back mm -hmm. then, is like because. Obviously, I watched that, so I saw him reunite his son with the guy. So when you made the mention, the book portrays him as a bad guy. I was like, and he's murdered. By what? The, the scare? I mean, are you kidding me? He's, he's a man of the people. He's a freaking Robin Hood for God's sake. Mm, but mm -hmm. that's evidently not how the books went. I definitely want to watch the episodes, so I will definitely be doing that. We'll finish season one of Broadchurch, watch the episodes, and then do season two of Broadchurch. Okay. Okay. Uh, any specific moments that you want to comment on? Like I have, um, I loved any time the vicar was doing stuff and he was like, you know, it's a little like, huh, huh, because he's the scarecrow, which is a very Clark Kent Superman moment for me. Um, and I, I really liked when the red coat guy who was in love with the daughter turned and helped them. I really liked that. I also, <laughs> I also just really love when, near the end, when he literally, where the Scarecrow set up the vicar. Yeah. We're going to get him. He's not a good guy. He's literally <laughs> setting himself up. But the whole thing was masterful, the way he pulled it off. And that, I'm sure that that was one of the ways that they allowed everybody to know that, you know, nobody knows who he is or if there was ever... I mean, Any uh, thought, or is, is, is it possibly the vicar? Well, that got thrown out because of this nice little sleight of hand by the actual scarecrow himself. So that was cool. Yeah. Really so glad that you found it because I had told Coot about it, and she's like, ooh, I gotta find it. It took a while, but she actually found it. And Max found it. It was I a piece of my memory there last night watching. Uh, it was like I was six years old again, Max. Thanks for that. It's not easy to make an old fart six. <laughs> a weird sentence. Say it again. It's not easy to make an old fart six. <laughs> I would, uh, I also have written down that this was very fun to watch with you because I know what it's like to watch something you haven't seen since you were a kid, but obviously I'm only like 29, so it's not as big of a gap, but I've definitely hit a couple movies that have been like, have I seen this? And I'm like, oh my God, I've seen this. I, the, oh, and it like jogs memories and stuff like that. But I think it's really fun that we got to watch something that you haven't seen that you really enjoyed and like stuck with you and there was no way for you to see it again. And a lot of people don't remember. I know I have vivid memories of it, but a lot of people don't even, uh, who's that? Right, well, because it was such a fleeting, because Disney always did that. They did three part movies or two part movies or four part movies and then they would never, like, they would maybe air another time, but that was it. Yeah. And then once that was over, like a lot of the times, unless the movie was super successful, they wouldn't print it to DVD. Or anything like that so and a lot of older period stuff they don't there's no vehicle for Disney on television anymore they don't have a wonderful world with Disney I mean, or, Disney, and Channel, Disney Channel but, but I, I don't I don't ever recall it being run there so I think I from it. just from the timing it was released and you know it, it's made they may not feel I mean it was very much I think even though the movie seemed more adult it's definitely wonderful world of disney and kids would love that i mean mm. that's the kind of character kids would love there was even children characters in there to keep the kids engaged and i think that it would be something that the moderns kids might like but you know maybe not not enough never effects. know never know <laughs> not enough effects. no phones ah no phones. <laughs> um okay what would you rate it out of 10 Oh, wow. Uh, as a movie, I don't yeah. know, like a 6 out of 10, probably as a movie. Okay. Uh, but uh, as a character, it's a 10 out of 10, because I think it's an awesome character. But uh, as a movie, it was, it seemed like it was sewn together mm. a little <laughs> bit. And, and, and that's the real trick, you know. Gene, and God, it was great when you were 6, why wouldn't you rate it higher than that? Well, because I also understand the concept of movies, and... My guess is, had they chosen to and really wanted to get after it, they could have made an even better movie. 
but it wasn't intended to be a movie. It was intended to be a three-part TV series. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Six what? Scarecrows? Well, definitely six. Well, six cornstalks, six broom handles, six... <laughs> Scarecrows. You had to see his. Sh- you had to see his shoulders, folks. It's a broomstick. Broomstick. I. My final rating is also six. Scarecrows out of ten. Our total to movie counting. Parent death and cry count are still the same, though. No, no dead parents have spoken of. Right. They didn't say it. Oh no! I don't think anybody was actually killed. But they also don't say. A parent is dead, and you don't see a parent die. No. So, no parent death. No, they didn't cry. There were parents, but they did not die. No, thank goodness. Um, I did total movie count. No parent death. Uh, if you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Critty. You'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put out videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Do you want them to follow you on anything? Nope. No? No Coop Harper stuff? Well... I am a musician these days, playing a little harmonica in a blues band in Costa Rica named the Poison Dart Frogs. You can find them on Facebook if you like, and uh, I have a YouTube channel of Coop Yardbird Harper. You feel free to go out there and hear a little bit about what we're putting down. Let's see? Okay. Until next time, comment, like, and subscribe, but I'm not in charge of your life. You are, so do you, and don't be the general about it, for sure. For He's sure. Awful. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Jess. <laughs> Jess, ooh. Yeah, it didn't sound right to me either. <laughs> Why would you call me that? <laughs> I don't know. I figured we Have were you official ever on said camera. Jess? <laughs> we're official on have camera. You ever so called now me she's Jess, Jess, not Coot. But have you ever just called me Jess? No. You Usually do Jessica. Coot or Jessica. <laughs> yeah. That was weird. That sounds strange. I thought strange. we were using your professional name. I don't care what you call me. Call me what you normally call me. Okay. You're my dad. It's not like we're putting on some kind of show. Oh. We're not? <laughs> You're always putting on a show, let's be honest. <laughs> Do you have it on you? Like whip it, it out. What? My harp? Yeah. I have a harp. Whip it out. Show them what for. Okay. Show them a little something. I keep a harp around. A little something something. Needs cleaning. Yes. Dirty. I forgot to change my shirt. So I'm in oh, the same shirt from the last my video. <laughs> God, Jessica. We have to refilm the whole thing, Dad. I can't do it again. <laughs> I'm not good enough. Don't make me. 